Hello, everybody. Welcome to Home Sweet Home San Antonio Live. It is Gabriel and I. We, well, you'll see me, but Gabriel is always behind the computer. And like with every video, I always say, everybody say hi to Gabriel. So say hi, Gabriel. <laughs> he's here. He, he's, he's here, I promise. But thank you so much if you're watching. Uh, we truly appreciate it. This is our fourth podcast, and I'm super excited for our uh, guest today. Now, of course, Gabriel and I are San Antonio's realtor couple. So one of the things that is our duty and we feel like is our job as realtors is we are real estate consultants. And as real estate consultants, it's us helping you fall in love with San Antonio. And I think one of the best things about San Antonio is that there's so much charm and genuine people here in San Antonio. So that's one of the biggest reasons why you should come move to San Antonio and that's going to be a thing that helps you fall in love with San Antonio. Now, our guest today, she's genuine. She's charming. She's actually one of my favorite people in San Antonio, and I'm so excited. She's our guest today. It is Diana Clary. Can we get Hi. applause? I think Gabriel's <laughs> doing applause. <laughs> so Diana Clary is our manager with, at Phyllis Brown & Company, so mm -hmm. that's our brokerage, and she is the manager at the North Central office. So... Diana, thank you so much for being here today. Well, thanks for having me. And I know it's last moment. You, uh, you. Well, I'm glad to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, literally yesterday, can you be on a podcast? And you're like, yeah, sure. So thank you <laughs> for the last minute. But we are super excited to have you here. Now, I want to talk to you about so many things. But first things first, can you please introduce your beautiful self to the YouTube world? Well, sure. Hi, I'm <laughs> Diana. i um, been in real estate for, gosh, I guess since 1992. I've been, been a licensed real estate agent since 07. Uh -huh. And moved to San Antonio and started working for the Phyllis Browning Company in 2020, right in the middle of the pandemic. Yeah. So it was great. Um, love this town. I mean, the real estate market is amazing. The um, architecture, like you were just saying, it's got so much charm, so much quaint yes. areas. Um, really a lot of fun. I came from Dallas, so learning all about all of San Antonio has been a lot of fun, but it's great. Is that how are the so you came here and how, you grew up like of course in the south that in the Dallas area, which is I know and we both know that Dallas and San Antonio are like drastically different. Yes. So tell us about the difference as far as like hometown and the market. Dallas versus San Antonio? Well, so I think San Antonio is really different. You could go 10 miles and have a completely different, yeah. a totally different experience, you yeah. know? So I live up in Bulverde. Mm -hmm. That's a very small town. Yeah. You can go 20 minutes um, to the west, and they're in Bernie. Yes. And Bernie is very, uh, very western. Yeah, You know, when I was walking country. through there, I saw people with cowboy hats on, and I mean, for real. I thought yeah. at first it was a costume, you know, but they're for real, yeah. you know, people working that way. And then you can go the other way and you can hit New Braunfels. Uh -huh. And that's Germantown Worst Fest. Um, very, very, uh, a lot of culture there too. Yes. Then you can go up to San Antonio. And of course, we've got all of the beautiful um, South Texas, um, you know, and missions and all this yeah. stuff. Just a lot of beautiful architecture. So yes. you see it all across the city. And it's not there. I love Dallas. I grew up there. But, you know, there are parts that feel like you can't really tell when you go into one town to an X. Yeah. Here you can. Yeah. I love that part. I, I know that Gabe and I sometimes are driving on the east side. And we're like, this doesn't feel like this is San Antonio. Like, yeah. this is, I, I grew up here. This is not San Antonio. So the west side is so drastically different from yeah. the east side. And the north side is so drastically different. So I like how there's just variety all throughout the city and you can just always have like a kind of a break of scenery if you need it so yeah that's and, I, really and cool. I was telling my brother my brother was looking at land down here and he's like well I want a view and I said everything's a view yeah <laughs> the whole place is a view yeah I mean you just walk down your street and you just get beautiful you can catch glimpses of the hills and everything I love it once there was a there was a pod not a podcast there was a video that we did where I think we celebrated 100 subscribers on our YouTube channel. Yeah. We're like now at over 1,000. Whoop, whoop. Yay. But one of the fun facts I learned was that the Tower of Americas in downtown, it was meant to be that no, ma no matter where you are standing in the city, you will see it. And actually, when you're driving kind of over like maybe five minutes away in another neighborhood, there's this hill and you can see the Tower of Americas. I thought that was the coolest thing. That is really mm -hmm. neat. So... 
Yeah, it's just kind of like San Antonio is just this this melting pot, but it's just also this. Well, I think it's unique out of all the big cities. It is. In Dal- uh, you know, Dallas, Houston, uh, they all have their charm. Every place has their charm. And Austin. But San Antonio, I think, is, is well, it's poised to be one of the bigger areas. You know, yeah. that's, uh, San Antonio, New Braunfels metro area, yeah. I think, is on its way to be one of the top, you know, in the country. I think they're yes. saying like 20, 40 or something. It's uh-huh. going to be one of the top areas. Yep. For sure. Now... I think it's really interesting. Tell us a little bit about your background because you have such an interesting background. I know before the podcast, we were kind of talking about it. I want to hear a little bit more or they want to hear a little bit more about it. And how did you find yourself at Phyllis Brown and kind of tell us that beautiful journey? Well, so I worked for another, um, I guess, Brand X, you Mm -hmm. know, in Dallas um, and started there. So for whatever reason, I decided to do real estate in 2007 when the market was crashing. (laughs) But everybody said it was crazy. But, you know, look, to me, it was a great opportunity to help people. Yeah. So that's kind of what I really wanted to focus on. But started there um, with the same company, that little, the office that I started with had maybe 40 agents. Mm -hmm. Then it kept growing and growing. Um, Decided to, I decided to grow my own personal business and I started a team. Um, That didn't work out so well the first time because I didn't listen to all the advice I got. I decided... (laughs) <laughs> I knew best, so I did my own thing, and I regretted yeah. it. Uh-huh. But then I kind of backed up again and started to get real serious about the business. Yeah. Hired a coach. Um, really got committed to learning everything about the actual real estate business. Yeah. Not just looking at it from one transaction, but looking at it over, you know, wh- this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. The overhead, Did that, yeah. and then found myself in coaching and mm. had my own coaching um group and loved it just loved it Mm -hmm. and my husband lost his job and we ended up he had ended up finding his dream job here in San Antonio and we were going to move here anyway this was on our our bucket list to move for our retirement so when the opportunity came up we said yeah let's go Mm. so we moved down here um we sold the house like in three days my husband came down here with our RV we we had two cats and two dogs in an Mm -hmm. RV Found our, our house and, yeah. and moved here. And then I ended up with um, the Phyllis Browning Company because COVID hit. Uh-huh. And the brokerage that I w- had transferred with shut down everything. Oh, wow. And Phyllis Browning Company stayed open. Mm-hmm. All of their offices were opened. And um, I just happened to be looking at you know, ads because I was really bored. I was like, Oh my gosh, <laughs> I had nothing else to do. I have nothing else to yeah. do. I thought, well, I'll go and volunteer. Well, you know, pretty soon you couldn't even do that. So yeah. I thought I have to do something. So I was just looking for just a something to do yeah. dog walk. And my husband's like, don't dog walk. Everybody's at home. They don't need their dogs walked. Yeah. I'm like, so what am I going to do? <laughs> and so I was just looking and I saw that they were looking for a manager and I thought, gosh, um, I had known about the company with mm-hmm. this reputation, right? Being luxury and really great agents. So I thought, well, might as well try. And I got an interview and started and absolutely love it. Yeah. Because I was with a franchise before, and this is um, an independent, family-owned company. So different. But it's really, I think, good for our clients. Yeah. So how was that transition going? And what you weren't, I'm just going to assume, right? You weren't with a luxury no. broker before. Okay. So how was the transition going from that to a luxury broker? So luxury, so people look at luxury a little different, right? When yeah. I first started in 2007, it was a price point. It was 500000 That yeah. was a lot. You know, it the was. average sales price was about $150,000, 180000 mm-hmm. So five hundred was considered luxury. Now it's bumped up to about $800,000. Mm-hmm. I would say probably in the last year it's been close to a million. Yes. So our, our brokerage does the most million-dollar sales, mm-hmm. um, listings and sales. But I think what's different um, is more of a luxury um, experience. Mm-hmm. It's not really the price point. Yes. Uh, you know, so we want to treat all of our people that way. And, you know, we're an upwardly mobile society. Yeah. So, you know, you buy and sell enough real estate, you're going to be buying multi-million dollar homes too, because, mm-hmm. you know, every time you buy and sell, you put that money into the next one yep. and you just continually move up. So mm-hmm. it's not, it's, it's reachable for everybody. Yes. You know, that's what I love about real estate. It's, Everybody can do it. Yeah, and I wanted to say, so of course, you being a manager, that requires um, just being able to talk to a variety of different people. Mm -hmm. And one thing I really love about your background is, of course, you have marketing, which is helpful as a coach, Mm -hmm. and you have a coaching background. 
and you have like an acting background and all this other stuff so you can think on your feet especially mm-hmm. with like improv and stuff mm-hmm. so the really really cool thing is that you have experience as an agent yourself which mm-hmm. i think is super helpful to no matter what type of agent you are whether you're a veteran you have a lot of experience under your belt or even if you're just like a fresh brand new baby infant Mm -hmm. agent so that's really cool how you can bring your own experiences real life experiences into the the uh the position so do you find that it you with all of that background you can actually adjust to all the different types of agents in the office i think so Mm -hmm. i think there's there the one important thing i think that most agents need to be no matter what stage you're at is you need to be coachable yeah. You need to be open to new ideas. You know, it's easy to go, okay, well, what worked last summer? The market shifts, people change, the, everything has changed. I mean, technology has been a huge change. Yeah. You know, I, I remember not too long ago, I thought texting was stupid. I thought nobody's going to text, <laughs> you know? I mean, because when it first came out, I didn't see the application for it. Uh. But then that is such a huge part of all of our lives now. So mm-hmm. we have to be open to that. We have to be open to new ways of doing business. And um, so I think agents, no matter what age they are, have to go where their customers are, Yeah, you know, and communicate to their customers where they're at. And it changes. You know, if it's face-to-face, it's, fa- you know, Meet, meet them face to face. If it's texting, you text. You know, there's a lot of different ways to communicate, and it just, um, it. I mean, I used to handwrite contracts, which is crazy, right? Everything yes. is digital now, so that was a big change. Yeah. And then you look at that and you go, a lot of people resisted that. Uh huh. And now, when you look at what that does to your business and the convenience it gives to your clients. And the time that you can save, and that maybe that gives you opportunity to help another person, you go, okay. So what I would say is when a new technology or anything new comes in this business, a new market, anything, you have to be willing to learn about it. Adopt it. Adopt it and think about how you can help your clients because that's really what it's all about. Right? Yeah. That's all we do all day is we think of ways to help our clients. Yeah. So would you say the biggest difference from being a realtor, you know, like a decade ago to to now what you would you say technology is the biggest difference or what is the biggest the other, difference to you the other biggest difference is uh-huh. really the price point okay you know huh. if you think about it what what the price points are now throughout the country yeah have gone up so much so there is a, you can make a lot more money in mm-hmm. this but i think with that you have to be a lot better yeah you have to get really really professional and one of the things that I've noticed is the agents that really embrace it, it really takes maybe, I think with you guys, it took maybe a year Mm -hmm. and you go, okay, this is it. I knew from the minute I did it. Yeah. (laughs) I was like this. I love this. I love helping people. Yeah. I love serving my clients. So it was never really about the money. Mm -hmm. It was just ways to get better, to be a better advocate. And so I think those things are the same. Um, Technology is different. I think we, because of some of these shows we were just talking about, Mm -hmm. um, you know, where where they have the realtors go around and they sell, look at three properties and, you know, and the flip (laughs) houses and all of that's kind of, we have to deal a little bit with that because it's not real, Mm -hmm. you know, and clients don't know that. Yeah. And they think, oh my goodness, it's going to be so easy. So kind of re-educating the public's a little different. That's true. That's a good point. So the struggles basically that you you found yourself in when you were agents and practicing real estate, do you find that the, like us as agents, we're kind of struggling with the same things? Yes. Like the same kind of clients, the same kind of setbacks. Yes. People are people. Yeah. That, I mean, (laughs) since the beginning of time, human beings have been the same. Yeah. I would say what's different is, you know, agents and they don't realize this you know as your business gets better you kind of hit a ceiling yeah and you don't know what to do next you're doing everything that you can do but you're stuck Mm -hmm. so it's really important at that point to not go inward and to say oh it's me I'm messing up it's something Mm -hmm. about me no it's because you're doing so much business you hit a ceiling yeah and then that's when you need to talk with your manager Mm -hmm. that's when I step in and I I help I, I like to help agents I've been there I've been there many times where I just would get so frustrated because I could not, I was exhausted, but I could not break that barrier, yeah. you know? So then I would get help, and that's why I got a coach, and that helped me break through that next barrier. And having somebody kind of come out 
and talk with you business-wise and help you see what your strengths, where maybe you could use, you know, some cleaning up or straightening up or where you might be wasting time is critical because we, we get involved. We don't know what we're yeah. doing wrong, you know. And for me, it was systems. Mm-hmm. Um, I needed a lot of systems so that I could take care of people better. I spent a lot of time on things that weren't really beneficial to my client. Yeah. So that's when I started going, okay, I can let somebody else do that and let me spend more time here. Yeah, I think you told us one time, Gabriel and I, like you're busy doing busy work, but you're not busy doing, there's some words you use, some type of work. It's yeah. sort of like, uh, I, I can't stop thinking about the word progressive, but yeah, it's just yeah. like stuff that's actually going to lead to something versus like, yeah, I was doing this today. And it's like, is that really what you need to be doing though? Right. And mm-hmm. I think the other thing too that we talked about too is it's not all fun. It, the, right. <laughs> so if you think of it like a game, you know, I don't want to think of it like a game, but let's say like an athlete does, right? They run all the sprints. They do all the hard work during the mm-hmm. week so that they are really in great, great form when they get on the field, right? Yeah. So for us, getting on the field might be, you know, negotiating a contract or doing something that's very high, yes, high value, mm-hmm. um, very intense. You can't stay there all the time because you have all those sprints and everything else you have to do yeah. to get to that point. You may have to show them 60 homes. You might have to do, yeah. <laughs> you know, a lot of other things to get to that point, but you need to be on the top of your game when you yeah. get there. So it's, there's a lot of that going on. And, um, you know, people always go, well, I want all the flexibility. Mm-hmm. And as you know, yeah. you, if oh, you have you, all that flexibility, yeah. you don't have any money. So you yes. have to have some kind of routine. You still have mm-hmm. to be committed. Yeah. And I love, absolutely adore you and having you as um, our manager. And the, I really feel like I chose the perfect office office because Gabriel and I were kind of like, should we do Alamo Heights office? And should we do the North Central? I'm like, North Central's closer. I think I just got a better vibes from oh, there. Oh, we love it. I love so having you guys there. even though I, we're not new agents, we're coming up on our third year. Um, I mean, kind of technically new, not like... Well, you you guys have done a lot for your first couple of years. I mean, you really have done. And that's what we were talking about the other day. I said, you have to sometimes go, wow, we really have helped a lot of people. Yeah. And and, And you'll help a lot more. Yes. And the thing is kind of like, uh, we kind of, we did surpass our ceiling. Like last year we hit a ceiling. We're like, we cannot get past the 3 million mark. Of course we got past it this year, of course, with, with y'all's help and with, him and I together. But I know that with new agents coming into the industry, new agents coming into Phyllis Browning Company, what can Phyllis Browning Company or you provide as new agents come into PBC? And especially, let's talk specifically about the, you could talk about PPC in general, but if you find that there's something more specific to the North Central office, please mm-hmm. share that. Mm-hmm. But is there something that y'all do for new agents coming into the business that need so much handholding? Yes. Even uh, though they think they don't need it, they well, do. <laughs> they do. They don't realize it until they start to go write that offer and they go, oh. Yeah, pretty so, much. So um, we have a business development program, and I, I don't really know of another brokerage that does this. Mm-hmm. So we have um, two very seasoned um women that take those new agents Mm -hmm. and work with them, handholding them, whatever they need to help them build their business. It's called business development. So it's a 10 transactions. Mm -hmm. Now, some, uh, once you get through the 10 transactions, you can go out of the program and then, or you could, um, uh, sorry about that. Um, (laughs) Or you could um, stay in it. It really just depends, but it's a series of classes and coachings and workshops and all of those things that you need to know. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what they do. And we help them, and it's been very successful. So we have a, that's really a great system. We don't, you know, this one lady I coached one time, she said something, I thought, this is exactly how it is. You get your license. Uh-huh. You you know, God put it on your heart. This is what you want to do. Yeah. You went to all those horrible classes yeah. to get your license. You yes. suffered through it. And then you get it. And someone just throws you in the ocean and they say, okay, start swimming. Yeah. They didn't tell but you which direction. Where? How do I swim? How do I need fast? a floaty? <laughs> how, Are there how, sharks in the water? Right. <laughs> exactly. They don't tell you anything. Yeah. And then you just are out there swimming. And if you don't even, you don't even see anything on the horizon. So yeah, you, you it's don't. really important that somebody gives you direction and helps you get through that. Um, and, you know, the mindset is really important. Yeah. So the, the, 
I don't, don't quote me on the number, but I know that 85 to 90 percent of agents quit their very first year. Yes. And it's like the same high percentage in the second year. So knowing those results how do you do you find pbc always thinks about how do we keep agents from quitting yes and no Mm -hmm. okay so what i found if someone is coachable and they want to learn and they 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 go through it you know Mm -hmm. they run those they run the sprints they do what they need to do then they'll get through it and they'll get through the other side because everybody's going to go through the same pain yeah. Okay. <laughs> Pretty there, much. It's, it's not easy for anybody. It's hard for everybody. So the ones that will go through it and fight through it because they have that really strong desire mm-hmm. will make it. Yeah. And they'll be great agents and they'll probably never get out of it. They'll be, they'll be selling real estate when they're 90 because mm-hmm. it gets in your blood. And those that can't, mm-hmm. we know pretty quick, you know, and it's nothing, there's no shame in that because it's okay. It may not be the right time yeah. or it may not be the right um, thing for them. Yeah, right the right they have other things going on in their lives and that's fine. Um, but I think you have to be real honest with yourself mm-hmm. and say the first year's tough. Yeah. It's tough. It is. And you guys had each other. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't, right? And yeah. they might even have people at home that are like, they don't fa- understand. Yeah. Or my family was saying, what are you doing? Get into the market at, oh, when everything's crashing, are you <laughs> yeah. crazy? So you have a lot of other people that maybe don't get it, but you still have this dream and you want to do it yeah. and you want to be there for people. So you just keep doing it and you mm-hmm. keep doing it. And eventually you wake up one day and you go, oh my goodness, <laughs> I've, I'm, I've done this and I have a lot of clients and I'm helping people and yeah. I'm learning and I'm growing and I have uh, you know, particular things that I'm really passionate about in this industry. Yes. Now, as far as... Of course, I feel like all agents are kind of struggling a little bit right now, yeah. or a lot of them, maybe not all of them, but I think most agents are struggling right now just because of how the market is. And of course, we know the market and stuff like that. So what advice could you, because we might have some, I wanted you to give two th- pieces of advice for two different people. Um, we might have some agents watching. Mm-hmm. So what advice would you give for agents in this market right now? And also, on the other side of the transaction, what advice would you give buyers and sellers right now? Or maybe that's three pieces because buyers and sellers are different people, yeah. right? Or different types of... Could be. But... Well, I think I think all of us, regardless of what side you're on right okay. now, I think it's a really weird time. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of uncertainty. I think... We're all feeling it. I mm-hmm. think as agents, we feel it. I'm sure doctors feel it. You know, look what, what the medical profession just went through. You know, mm. they went through a very shaky, scary time, right? That's Imagine. a good point to make. So I think all industries do this. I think human beings, we've done it. I think the one thing we can realize is we should have a lot of um, empathy towards one another. I think mm. people are n- nervous about what's going on in the world, yeah. right? I would say that... No matter what's going on in the world, we are still living our lives. Mm -hmm. You know, people are still getting married. People are still having babies. People are still downsizing. People are still getting that great job. They just still need a place to live. They need a place to live. So we can't let the fear stop us. Mm -hmm. But I think that's why if you have a really good partnership with your agent, you can talk with them. And they're not going to push you into doing anything that you don't want to do. They're going to listen and they're going to say, you know, I get it. Maybe right now isn't the best time, but I'll keep you posted, you know, Mm -hmm. and let you know what's happening. Um, The same thing with um, agents. I think agents need to understand this is the long game. Yeah. It's a marathon, not a sprint. It's a marathon. We are here for our clients. And, Mm -hmm. you know, whether they want to buy and sell today or if they never buy and sell, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You know, it's our job to keep them informed of the market so they can make good decisions. Mm -hmm. Um, People know what's best for them, and I mm-hmm. think sometimes fear gets in the way, but it's a weird time. It's a yeah. scary time, and I feel like we've all been a little um, we've all been a little traumatized, right? Yeah. But I think about all of those doctors and nurses. I mean, uh-huh. how terrifying they they went they showed up every day. They did, and they did their jobs. So I think we all have to do the same thing. Yeah, just follow like in great footsteps. So, of course, with troubling times comes troubling cases of yeah. all sorts. Can you talk to us? Not a lot of people might not know, but of course, there's always something going on behind the scenes with like the National Association of Realtors, San Antonio Board of Realtors. But there's a huge NAR case going on right now. Can yes, you it was tell actually us a little bit more just, about it? It was actually just 
uh, it to go to the jury, mm -hmm. and the jury did rule against yes. National Association of Realtors. And I, I'm not sure. I'm getting a little confused. There was a couple of different cases, but they're all kind of running around the same thing. Yeah. And basically, it was a class action suit. Mm -hmm. It was a bunch of sellers that got together and they said, hey, yeah. we're, we feel like we've been put in a bad position, like we are being forced to pay a commission to the buyer's yeah. agency. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll just start off by saying that's not, a, that's not true at all here in Texas. I don't know about other states, but with all of our agreements, mm -hmm. it's always fill in the blank. Yeah. The commission is fill in the blank. The price is fill in the blank. Everything is negotiated. Yes. So... Anything that we put in there, we talk about it. So um, it's, I would say for agents, we need to make really certain that the, our clients really understand who's paying for what. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that's basically it. Yeah. And we just all need to be really clear. I think some people might have been confused. Um, they were like, well, why am I paying for a buyer's agent? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe the agent didn't really explain to them the reason they may want to do that is co-op because that way you'll get more people showing your property, yeah. right? So there's, there's you know, pros and cons on both sides. But they did lose the case, and it was a humongous judgment. Yeah. Uh, $1.6 billion. Yeah. I don't think any of it's going to go to the clients. It's probably going to go all to the lawyers like class, you know, class action yeah. does. But they are appealing it. I think they have a real good case for it. Um, yeah. You know, um, they were basically saying that they were being, being forced to pay something that I they weren't. Yeah. And I, I think it's a, it's a perfect time to kind of also maybe not a lot of realtors. And, I, you know, hold on, because my mind's all over the place. So, of course, things like this bring up things for agents to learn, because maybe not all agents knew, like, oh, I never thought about why do sellers pay the buyer's agent. I just was taught that, and I didn't know why. I just... That's you what just I do it. Right. That's what you were taught. You, you just put it on the, the contract as 6% or you negotiate it down. But no matter what, the seller pays a commission. So uh, I think there's always something to learn from this. And I think maybe some agents are also scared, like, oh, my gosh, don't tell the I hope no sellers hear about this right now because that's going to make it con a confusing listing for me. So I think there's just it's going to like so shake a lot of ground. Yeah, so I would look sense? at it this way. So, you know, commissions are always negotiable. Right. Yeah. Now, as a broker, we, we do charge to list a property 3%. Yeah. Okay. So that is the listing for the seller. Now, we strongly recommend that they also pay for a buyer's agency. Yeah. Because that way we know that they're going to get the most activity on the property. We know the more activity on the property, the more likely they are to get more offers. It drives up the price, right? Yep. So they get more choices as a seller. Now, if a seller decides that's not what they want to do, they are perfectly within their right. However, as a brokerage, we will not choose to take a listing that doesn't at least do 3% mm -hmm. towards the, um, you know, for us because our services yeah. of that. Now, on the flip side of that, a buyer, right? So a buyer, they obviously are picking a realtor because they want someone to help them on the mm -hmm. biggest purchase that they're probably going to ever have in their life. So sometimes the seller pays for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, it says that right in the agreement. Sometimes they don't. So the question you would want to ask your buyer is, if they don't, mm -hmm. are you willing to? Mm -hmm. Now, I think if, a, if, you have a, if you can explain the benefits that you're going to bring to the table as an yeah. agent. I mean, buyers probably don't know the first thing about how to negotiate for repairs, how to negotiate yeah. for option periods. Fill out the contract they in don't order know to do that. They don't know the ins and outs of how much earnest money they should put down. There's all kinds of things yeah. that they could really end up um, putting themselves, costing them a lot more money exactly. than what the, the representation would cost. Yeah. But that's the choice for the client, you know, and we have to explain that to them. And then at the end of the day, if a, if a buyer decides they want to go on their own, that's what they need to do, right? But right. we can't represent somebody without a representation agreement because there's 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 um, a lot of other legal things in there too. So Yeah, for sure. So I want to get into a little bit of like, of course, the market shifting. So agents have to automatically shift. And I think one of the best things to also, I do want to bring up your, your, your past a little bit with acting and improv. Do you think that agents would benefit from something like that, like a like a improv class? Because Gabriel and I follow Ryan Serhant. We uh -huh. love that man. He's just like this pinnacle icon that we just desire to be like one day, right? So, 
he also he actually took improv classes and that really helped him because it's just like there's so many different people out there to handle and to deal with and so many different transactions you're dealing with title the lender you're dealing with your clients you're dealing with the other agent and sometimes not everybody's doing their job so it's kind of like you don't know what's gonna be thrown at you at any point and you don't know how they're gonna throw it at you so do you feel like with not only the the to- even if the, the right like even if real estate's in a good market crazy stuff happens all the time but even in like in a crazy market crazier stuff's gonna happen so you do know, you feel like the improv classes will help agents i hadn't thought of that but i think it's a great idea you know for the one thing because i was flashing back to my my improv yeah and the the, the improv that i did great yeah. was when i wasn't thinking about what i was going to say mm-hmm. and when i was listening to what the people in the scene were saying because you can't, you know, if you get, yeah. you know, the, the death of improv is when you get stuck in your head yep. <laughs> on what your script is, right? Yeah. And so if that's, I would say, it was a great thing for, for agents to think about that, you know, it's not what we want to say, it's what the client wants to say, right? Yeah. So you have to listen to what they're saying, and that's probably a really, not a bad idea. Right. <laughs> to do that, because you'd probably be a better listener. Should have an a improv class come to PVC oh, and wouldn't do that a be meeting, fun? and we'll just stand around and improv. <laughs> Well, you know, they might do it. Yeah. Some of them might. I would totally, or, you know, maybe, it, and you know what, also when we were talking about, um, just to, to brush up really quickly on, on PBC, uh, every Wednesday we have the the Wednesday meetings. Yes. And sometimes we go to them, Gable and I make some of them, and sometimes we don't, but when we do, they're always just so informational and so Good. beneficial that it would be, I remember one class you talked about the different kind of types of personalities. I think Gabriel and I know them as red, yellow, Uh blue, and white personalities. But, you know, it's always like four different types of personalities. So it would be interesting to see an improv class with those different types of personalities. Because I know like a yellow or like me being yellow, red, majority yellow, I would deal with it like completely different. And Gabriel would be like, this is serious. Right. <laughs> Quit joking around, right? <laughs> Pretty much. So. Oh, that would be fun. You know, or even how to handle disappointment or when you get the rug pulled up from under your feet, even if it's your client, sometimes that's the most heartbreaking thing yes. for all of this. So I think even now more so than ever with transactions falling apart, you really see kind of people's colors and it's just, it's a lot going on. It's a lot going on. But you know what I would say for buyers? Mm-hmm. I know it's crazy, but this is the best time to buy. Yeah. I mean, I would be buying if I was, you know, this, it, people are freaked out about the interest rates. Interest rates will eventually calm down. Yeah. They will come back down again. What won't come down is going to be prices mm-hmm. and a huge drop. And even at the, so like buyers who sit there and think, oh, okay, I'm going to wait until the interest rates will come down. Well, guess yeah. what will go up? The prices. The price. And you also have a bidding war. So, yeah, it's really so, great to but have those now, points. Right now, they're putting, people are doing so many incentives. Mm-hmm. There's so many programs. I mean, I'm just And getting, you can even buy down your rate. Oh, it's my crazy. gosh. It is. So, I mean, there, there's, always, there's always opportunity. You know, every yeah. single market, and you look for it, and you go, um, wow, this might be a great time. Yeah. And you always find them being like, oh, man, I should have went on that opportunity. And you're like, well. Maybe you should have listened to the professional. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. It's hard to know. I mean, yes. I don't think people really buy over money anyway. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think they kind it's of justify no. it, but I think most people move because it has to feel like a right. It's lifestyle. Yeah, it's our lives. It has to be right? a right reason. We want to go to a great school, or we want a bigger room, or mom's moving in, or something's going on to make us consider to do that, or. It's just, or maybe the dream, you know, of, yeah. a, of a bigger yard or whatever it may be. And then I, I think people might buy stocks, right, for many mm-hmm. reasons. I don't really think people buy homes for that. That's true. No, maybe well, investors. Maybe investors. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like the investors. But they do. But and they're a whole different type of client. That's yeah. a whole different yeah. part of the industry, too. So it's, it's, a, it's a great experience, you know. I think... Um, I think for agents right now, this is our, our time mm-hmm. to give a lot of grace yeah. to other agents. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, everyone's going through a tough time, it, right? Yeah. Especially some agents that are maybe they haven't built, built a real foundation because they've been so busy, mm-hmm. you know, doing everything they could to get multiple offers in and whatnot. And so now things have shifted a little bit. They might be feeling a little insecure. Mm-hmm. So we got to be gracious and give you yeah. know, grace to them. And I think for our clients, you know, that 
that maybe we're all ready to do it and and something is telling him now's not the time yeah and just to to be okay with that because this will pass Mm -hmm. and when it passes um it it I mean, what goes up comes down. It comes up, it comes down. Yeah. Um, This is not a huge cycle. I think uh, the next, gosh, I mean, we were talking about this, I think, when the builders right now are crazy. Mm -hmm. There's never been, I can't remember a time in the last 10 years where it's been a better opportunity to buy new construction. Yeah. Yeah. For sure, and it may not, and you know, it may not be here. So those folks looking at that should really jump on. They should call you. Yeah, two one zero five zero four five three zero one. Speaking of buyers, I want to get back to the the NAR case really quick, just to make one point. Do you feel like not only will the sellers obviously be affected, but the at the other end of it, the buyers are going to be affected. Do you feel like, oh, well, crap, now that I have to pay realtors commission, which could be a good chunk of change, do you feel like more buyers would actually back out now from buying because that might be a flip of the script? Um, I don't know. I, again, I think we're thinking that everything has to do with money, mm-hmm. right? I think if, if somebody is wanting to purchase their first home and mm-hmm. they've never done it before, I would say... There is so much value. Yeah. Now there's other things, and we've kind of talked about this. There's other things that you can do. You know, you could if if the the buyer is going to be responsible for paying the the broker's fee mm-hmm. for their transaction. Maybe when they're negotiating, a smart realtor might when they're negotiating on that offer, try and get the seller to pay some closing costs to offset that. Mm. So there's ways that we can work this um, that makes sense. So. I would not let that scare anybody off. You can also try and go do it yourself. I will tell you, when I moved down here, I hired a realtor. I was actually about to ask. I was thinking the same question. I was like, did you sell your own home and did you buy your own home? Well, um, so I did sell my own property. Okay. I wish I hadn't. I wish I would have had somebody else do it. It was mm. a nightmare mm. um, for me. So I sit there and I think, oh, that would have been <laughs> worth worth having somebody else deal with that. Because <laughs> yeah. my husband was here. We had the dogs. We had just all kinds of stuff going on. Yeah. I would have loved to just moved and then let somebody sell it. Yeah. It would have been a lot less stress. So that, in hindsight, right? When we moved down here, um, I hired somebody. I didn't know the area. Hmm. As well. Yeah. I did, And, you know, we had a well. I, what's a you well? You know what? And it's your fiduciary duty <laughs> to yourself. <laughs> yeah. And I, you it's know. It's your code of ethics. You treated yourself with grace and kindness. There so, you <laughs> and if you think about it, really, as a buyer, I probably did pay for the fee anyway, but I was willing to do that because I knew, first of all, I had never had a septic system, never had a well, didn't know the first thing about it. Oh, I bet. Yeah. That's, that stuff gets, and I never would have found this house without her. So, oh, that's really nice. Yeah. When, um, I, I sold my house back in 2021. Yeah. 2021. I went through the same thing, like, man, that was just a transaction. <laughs> and it was with my ex-husband. So Ooh, I was, yeah. it was, oh my gosh, you know, save some money. But at the same time, I'm like, whoo, that, that was a tough one. Yeah, that was so, an interesting uh, you one. know, and I think realtors should probably do this every three or four years, sell a property so they remember. <laughs> they, they, because you forget how, how stressful it is. And you know everything. Yeah. And they don't. And you can only, and so it's probably like double, double, you know, they're probably like even more stressed, you know. <laughs> it's just not a pleasant experience. And I think um, having someone else help you just, and especially someone fun. I know, right? (laughs) So, of course, speaking of different types of agents, if you were to, what kind of agent personality would you work with? Like more yellow, red, white, blue? What what would you vibe with? So it's interesting. My husband and I are very different. Yeah. So I I probably would do much better with somebody who is quick and to the point. Mm. Not my husband. Yeah. Not my husband. He 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 wants to have a relationship. He's oh, really hand holding. Yeah. yeah, and then he he, <laughs> you know, wants to go to dinner. I mean, he's friends with them. And me, I was more like, okay, I like you. She great. She was very efficient, mm-hmm. um, and that's what I liked. Yeah, I was like, I don't really have time <laughs> now. I think it because it could have been just that circumstance. That's true. You know, maybe yeah. in a different. If I was in a different place, I was pretty stressed. 
Yeah, when you're stressed, you just like get to the details. Let's go. Yeah, because I, I couldn't got find twenty other things to stress about. Well, I couldn't find an apartment that would give, let me have two dogs and two cats. That's mm, one thing. Yeah. So I was like, sure. oh, we have to buy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that is so cute. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, what are your? If you could tell us anything about PBC, is there anything in the works? For agents who are looking into, who are already PBC agents or for agents wanting to come to PBC. I know you guys are always kind of changing things. Is there anything, little nuggets you can give us? So one thing that I love about the, uh, so one of the best things about being with, in my opinion, being with an independent brokerage Mm -hmm. is that we can pivot super fast. Yeah. So, um, and I love the fact that our CEO, Jennifer Mm Shemwell, is She is so Um, Mm forward-thinking. She spends a lot of her time just researching the latest technology, uh, the best things for agents. So she's constantly looking at things. So, yes, we get a lot of ideas, a lot of things coming up. Um, We, I mean, some of the technology that's coming up that we're going to be introducing is amazing. Um, It's the top of the line. There's nobody else out there. you know, talking about technology, a lot of things that we're seeing now are, are coming AI, yeah. you know, AI, <laughs> kind of AI like. So we've been having some fun with that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you're starting to see more descriptions written. You can always tell, but yeah. you know, we're starting to see more kind of fun uh-huh. things happen with um, AI and real estate. Mm-hmm. It'll be fun to see what happens the next two years. I just yeah. think it's, I think utilized properly, it'll be just a, a real powerful tool. For us to you, so I see. I see us bringing a lot more of that, yeah, into it. Um, of course, we're always going to focus on luxury and a luxury experience. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things we try to do for the agents is we want you guys taking care of your clients. Mm-hmm. That's what we want you doing. So we try to give you a lot of support on the backside. Yes, for sure. Yeah, so that you can do what you do best, um, and we we handle the other stuff. A lot of advertising, a lot of um, media, social media, other other ways to reach clients. Yeah, it's coming up. Huh. Okay. So twenty twenty four is coming up. Yes. How do you think the market is going to be next year, based off of your expertise and manager? Okay. Manager well, le- 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 uh, well, I got I got I got a cop to this because in when the pandemic hit, I thought real estate would have been dead. Yeah. So I totally that. missed it. I mean, I remember going, "Oh my gosh, what are we going to do? This is it, right?" We had the busiest year we've ever had. So yeah. I don't know that I'm really good at predicting, but I'll give it a go. <laughs> so um, that completely caught me off guard. I think um, it is going to be, we're going to see rates stabilize, mm-hmm. I think. Um, I think um, there'll still be a great market for, for buyers, first-time home buyers. I know it feels scary, but, man, I jump in there because there's going to be a lot of pent-up demand that's going to happen. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, with the election, election years are always... It doesn't matter. You know, change is good, I guess, in our culture. So whatever happens, Mm -hmm. it'll be a change from what we have, which typically drives real estate again. Mm -hmm. Um, This area, San Antonio, I swear, has got the Midas touch. Yeah. You know? It does. This just has not felt like the rest of the country. We're so blessed to be here. Yeah. I would definitely agree. And we passed that great law that, that... Passed on the Constitution on Tuesday, where a homestead exemption is now $100,000. Mm-hmm. That's going to save a lot on taxes. Yeah. So people moving out of state, that we did have pretty high taxes compared to other people. Yes. But we don't have property. We don't have income tax. Yeah. So it kind of offset. Uh-huh. But, um, so I think it might be a little, um, I would say if you're going to list, we're seeing a lot of listings come on, which is great. Mm-hmm. A lot more opportunities. Sellers have to be a little conscious of that. There's going to be a little more competition, I think, yeah. in the spring to summer than we've seen in the fall. Yeah. So we're seeing we're seeing more inventory. Um, I think it's going to be a good year. I like what Gabe was saying. Gabe was very optimistic, too. Yeah. I think you just have to be. If you're just a pessimist in this industry, you're not. I don't think you're going to make it. That'll just rub off to your clients. That'll rub off to the everybody in the transaction, the other agent, and... It's just, no one's, it's just that energy, you know? So if I had an opportunity to move into a great home Mm -hmm. for my family, and I just had to pay a little bit more every month. Yeah. Oh, you totally would. (laughs) Totally would. So it's not really, I don't, I think we get a little focused on the money because the the media talks about it, but 
it's really about our lives. It's yeah. about our family. It's about where we raise our children. Yeah. It's the schools they go to. It's all sorts of other things other than money. But somehow it, we use that as an excuse, I think, mm-hmm. sometimes to stop us from doing the things we want to do. Yeah. I, Gabriel's bringing up a good point. Um, I feel like, the for, especially the first two years that we were, we've been in the industry, um, it was so easy. And we didn't even realize it. I've always been like kind of like the the optimistic person, like, yeah, we'll be fine. Oh, yeah, it'll be work out. It'll work. It's, it's always going to work out. I just always have kind of been like that. Uh-huh. But coming into this industry was like kind of just this stressful environment that I had never really experienced before. And we started to have this like scarcity mentality of like, oh, just, just cl- cling on to any client and cling on to any, just anything that comes your way. Just, and sometimes it wasn't the best thing. And we always were just like, there's nothing out there. There's nothing out there in a sense. And then finally, after so long of him and I kind of just being, it weighs on you. You get to like a burnout for both of us. And we just had to kind of start looking at the numbers. Even when the real estate market is kind of suffering or it's just not as good, there's still transactions happening out there. Billions of dollars, millions and millions of dollars happening out there. You can be at least three of those transactions. You don't need to take a a thousand of those but you can take three like they're out there especially san antonio with how it's growing and so you just really i think for next year just agents in general really think in abundance think in abundance and think long term yeah you know if you look at the way 2020 went right yeah. the first quarter was nothing happened in our economy yeah. right and if that's what you if that's what all you saw in your world mm-hmm. it was a pretty bleak very scarce yes scary thing yeah but then all of a sudden the floodgates opened and i mean people were weird companies were making business you know we had yes. zoom and you know all these things exactly great i mean great opportunities sprung out of a dire situation because people need the people needed to connect yeah. people still need homes people still need to get on with their lives and so we crammed in everything that we lost those first probably two quarters all happened in the third and fourth so it wasn't a steady you know this but it that's what I'm saying pent-up demand will happen it might be a little slower I don't know you know it could boom but yeah I know that you know days on market have gone up dramatically so Mm -hmm. the velocity is slowed down you know before we put a home on the market you could put it on the market half the time you'd have it sold before you even got the sign out yeah. You know? Yeah. I love how you're talking like long term. I saw this video one time. I don't know where I saw it, but it was like such a good point that about every five to seven years, especially the real estate market, it goes up and it goes down and it goes up and it goes down. So when we came into the market in 2021, it was up, but we didn't feel that. We, and I think a lot of agents join because they're like, oh, cram, yeah. everything is up. I'm going to be raking in the dough and in the money. And it didn't work that way. And you see all these other agents just killing it. But they've already been in the industry for five to seven years. So they were just like, they had their machine going. They had their business going. So I told Gabriel, I'm like, listen, come 2025, 2026, and 2027, we are going to be just like the people that when we entered, we looked at them and we're like, what the heck? Where are you getting all of these buyers and sellers from? So it's time it's gonna, it's because they've been on it for exactly. a long time. So and we'll reap those benefits. Yes, you will. Yes, you I'm will. I'm so excited. <laughs> and it's a great, it's, it's, it's a different market, but they're all good. You know, yeah. um, they're all good. They just, you have to get really good at, at, you know, knowing, like coming in and thinking about, I love that you're asking those questions because that's important because that's what our clients think. They yeah. think what's going on. We need to tell them and be honestly what we know yeah. and share it with them. Now we're not going to make recommendations, right? We don't know what, what's best for them, Yeah. but if we give them the information, they can decide. Exactly. And then we can help them. They just Whether need to be educated. Yeah. If it's now or later, you know, um, Back in uh, 2008, boy, I was a listing queen. I'd list, you know, 12, 15 properties a month. But not, I thought, wow, this is great. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't so great. Yeah. A lot of folks could not close on those homes um, because they couldn't have write the checks at closing. Yeah. So we, we had to scramble, maybe lease it out, do other things to help them. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, I'm looking at it, what I thought was, wow, this is great. It, it, Turned out to be great because yeah. I stayed in touch with those folks. And eventually, when the time was right, we listed their home. Exactly. They sold it. So Long term. Long term. Yeah. It's the long game. And, you know, relationships are long term. Yes. If they're just a one and done, what, what 
what's the point of that? Yeah. So I want to get into San Antonio a okay. little bit because, of course, like I said in the beginning, we're here to help you fall in love with San Antonio. What um, what continue? Do you think you'll actually be in San Antonio for? You said that this was a retirement city for you, right? Yes. Well, we had originally looked at, we actually had made an offer in New Braunfels mm -hmm. um, back in 2015. Yeah. And uh, we didn't do it at that time because my husband was overseas. But we thought, well, that's okay. We were just going to buy it and build later. Yeah. And it just didn't work. So this was always someplace we wanted to come. It's beautiful. Yeah. Well, you know, honestly, San Antonio and Austin are slowly merging, so it's Kind of like San Antonio, in a sense. <laughs> yeah, but not if you drive up. If you go to Austin, if you go up through Blanco, yeah, that's beautiful. It is. So um, my husband and I, are we're doing a stay vacation. Because we used to always come down here for a vacation. Staycation. A staycation. Yeah. So we're doing that, and we're doing all the things that... We haven't done since mm -hmm. we've been here. We have a whole list of things. There's so like, much to do. Well, okay, so Gabriel and I have our YouTube channel, of course. Look at us up and subscribe if you haven't already. We have uh, a format of like a playlist of videos of unique stays in Airbnbs. Oh, good. And so well, we always, check it out. We love to show off Texas and San Antonio. So what are, what are some of those things? That you guys are thinking. Well, of course, we always do. We used to always come here for Worst Fest, you know, New Braunfels. Oh, yes. It's so much fun. Um, so we'll be doing that this weekend. Okay. Um, we, my daughter and I, every time she comes into town, we go find some new place to hike. Mm -hmm. And we've just found the neatest little pockets. Um, I'm trying to think where it was. It was kind of over on this west side, but just it looked like a residential neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And I saw all these cars parked. So we parked, and you could just hike up into this beautiful up this beautiful hill right in the middle of this residential huh, place. I have to send that to you. Please do, because yeah. we have our trails and tails the first Saturday of every month. <laughs> so yeah. you'll have to let us know about that. Uh, yeah. And so, um, of course, there's Canyon Lake. We want to go. We have not gone tubing since I was in college. Ooh, you so need So we're going to go. do that. And then we're real close to, um, you know, there's... I'm trying to think. My mind just went There's blank. Fredericksburg? Yes. Well, of course, Fredericksburg. We go there in Wimberley. We've Freaking spent days there. We Wimberley. want to go and just go. Kerrville is amazing. Yeah. I mean, we've just been to one part of it, but we are going to go, and we're going to go camping up there. Mm -hmm. So we want to do that. And then... Um, There's Enchanted Rock. Yes. We've uh -huh. done that. Okay. Yeah. But we want to do that again. So yes. we've got quite a few things um, like that. And then there's just some neat little... Um, in San Marcos... There's like these neat little um, like treehouse that you can rent on the water there. So we want to do that and stay there one night. I uh, I have I can't my mind is going blank. I can't think of these things. Well, but there's like all these neat little. I'll give you a little nugget. Yes. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it's near San Marcos, but we are actually in works of talking with a company. Who, and doing a video for them, and they have a bunch of tree houses, and we're thinking about covering those for a YouTube channel. Is that is it kind of out by um, Garner? Is it like West? Yeah. Oh, I know what that is. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. I know there's a bunch of them, so maybe. Yeah, and you can have but, dinner up there and everything. Mm, I think so. Maybe. Yeah, I think that's it too. But okay. there's there's a couple of them, but it's really neat. Yeah. So um, we wanted to do that. Of course, we're going to go down the river walk, which is neat. Yeah. Um, there is a neat um, museum, like an interactive one. I wanted to do hopscotch. Yep, that's you have it. To. Yeah, we that's love it. it there. So we're gonna do that. And they actually have really good drinks there too. Surprisingly, awesome. Mm -hmm. So we love doing all that kind of stuff. There's just so many neat places. Yeah. So um, we're gonna do. That's what we're gonna do for a week. So I mean, we're gonna we're gonna. I said we're just gonna pretend we're tourists. Yeah, for a week. that's the best thing to do. Sometimes yeah. everybody's like. Of course, being a local here in San Antonio, you know the best places and stuff to go. But I just love doing some of the touristy stuff because it's like. Man, this is fun. <laughs> well, we kind of got out of the habit. We used to come down here and camp and do that stuff. Yeah. And then uh, we moved here, and then the pandemic hit. We were like, oh. we just got in the habit of being homebodies. So we're about to stop that. Yeah, I think one thing, which is why Gabriel and I are doing this podcast and why we're doing our YouTube channel, is to, of course, as real estate consultants, like I said in the beginning, is to help people fall in love with San Antonio. Because I think we hear this a lot from clients, even if they've lived here, like, their whole life they get stuck because yeah. San Antonio is such a pocketed city mm -hmm. and there's a lot of areas that are not underserved so like everything you need is like within five to ten minutes that sometimes you don't go outside of that yeah or you just know downtown and where you live that's it 
So there's so much here to do and to be involved with. So that's why we're doing the trails and we're doing the mix and sip events just to show people like so many different sides and facets to san antonio that you're just missing out on oh i know it's such a neat Can't place get stuck. it's such a really neat neat place i mean honestly i didn't think i would we we just came down here as a fluke i brought my husband uh to fredericksburg for one of his for his birthday yeah. and we just started driving around my husband was like oh my gosh we just fell in love with the area i know we just love it and um and we've loved it ever since it's still it's feels still small but it's getting big yeah. And you know, I love that San Antonio uh, is a big town with a small town feel, but even if you need a smaller town feel, like one hour away, yeah. two hours or even, you can just... Well, the town I live in is pretty small. Exactly. But it's 20 minutes outside of outside of uh, San Antonio. Now that they got 281 done... Yeah. <laughs> I feel I like, I feel like I'm like being teleported that was to the office. Mess. You know what I mean? It's like I blink and I'm there. It's great. Pretty much. Okay. So I always love to ask realtors, uh-huh. like, you're, you're, you still have your license. Yeah. But tell us a nice little horror story or a success story. I love horror stories, though, because they're a little bit more fun to hear about. Do you have, a, like, just something that really sticks out to you? Oh. you do. <laughs> we all do. <laughs> we all do. <laughs> Well, oh, this is going to, I don't know if I should do it. Well, what the heck? Um, so, so you don't have to name any names. Okay. Well, <laughs> there was a time um, around 2010, 2011. Yeah. And I don't know if you remember when they were on the hunt for Saddam Hussein mm-hmm. and everybody was trying to find him. Yeah. Well, I had a client um, and we knocked on a door and the guy opened it and looked exactly like him. And my God, oh my gosh. She looks at me. She goes, "I think we just found Saddam Hussein." Oh. I was like, I couldn't stop laughing, and I felt oh. so rude, you know. And we start walking through the house, and it was just one weird thing after another. So we walked in, and he was following us the whole time, and we we were, you know, it was a little bit of a Intense. space. Yeah, yeah, it was a little space invader, which. You know, he probably thought, who are these people? Probably was uncomfortable having us there. But then we walk into one room. I didn't know anybody was in the room. And all of a sudden, a very old, old woman sat straight up in bed, scared us to death. And my client, Gosh. my client by this time was crying. She was laughing so hard. And I was trying so hard to get out. And I'm just trying to go, okay, these poor folks, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, anyway, we obviously didn't buy that home. But I always think about that day that we found Saddam yeah. Hussein showing us. <laughs> but it was, it was kind of, I mean, I wish I could have taken this picture. Exactly look like him. Wow. A, that's the only thing that came to mind when you asked that. Yeah. What about a success story? Oh, my gosh. You know, it's funny. Um the success stories that I think about really don't have to do with money. It has to do with the people. Exactly. You know, um, one of the best ones was um, I I had a client that I'd helped buy a home from, they moved from Calif- uh, North Carolina. So they were new. They were getting married. And they invited me to their shower, which, of course, I went. It was wonderful. Mm. Uh, but they were so sweet. And they introduced me as their realtor and their friend, which meant everything. We're sitting at a table, and a lady said, you know, my mom just died, and she'd like, I, we need a realtor. And I said, well, I'd love to help. So anyway, um, got the home listed, got to know these folks pretty well, and mm-hmm. it was the neatest story because she, when she sold the home, she said, well, I have a sister mm-hmm. that is long lost. We, I, don't, I haven't spoken to her, and she mm-hmm. was asking me. She said, I think I might owe her money on this. I said, well... You do have to, I mean, it looks like she left it to you mm-hmm. that because it closed. Mm-hmm. You have everything, so it's not an estate issue. And she said, well, I really, I've been praying about it, and I think I think I need to give it to her. Mm. The husband was kind of mad. He's like, well, I've been mowing that lawn forever, you know, and all that <laughs> stuff. And he said, no, no, it's okay. you got to do what you have to do. So they went on a quest mm. to find her. Yeah. And they found her sister that she had not spoken to in almost 30 years. Wow. And um, they had had a big falling out or whatever. But what was beautiful about it is she called and said, I want to give you the money. And she said, oh, I don't want it. But they reunited. I know that, that is sweet. really cool. So that was a neat story. There's there's a lot of them. How about you? Oh, girl, I'm going to tell you after the podcast. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's a long one. Yeah. And Gabriel says we have about a minute left. Okay. But with that minute left, 
Um, probably go a little bit over more. But we, Gabriel and I, we always give, of course, we have clients that after you sell a home or they buy a home, you give them a gift. Yeah. So I love art and doing artistic things. So I create canvases for clients. Oh, nice. And I have one for you. Oh, you're kidding. Nope. That's oh. also. How As awesome. a thank you for coming out here to our home and all this other oh, stuff, we want to give you my this canvas. Oh, that's so <laughs> nice. Thank you. Oh, I like it. It's good. Can yeah. Play? Is that like a silver? It's metallic crayons. So it's all wax. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, I'm going to put this in my office. <laughs> oh, really? Will yeah, you? Yes, it'll go in there. Great. Oh, it's beautiful. That is thank so sweet. You. You're welcome. It's so sweet. I bet your clients love that. They do. That's I nice think thing. they do. They say they do. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a very nice gesture to do. Thank you. I really appreciate it. You're that. welcome. So, um, yeah, you have now the opportunity to say anything you want to the people of YouTube. Uh, and you can just take it away, whatever you want. And you can also give out some information about PBC and how to reach you if they want to get in touch with you. Well... I would say this, let's have them reach you, okay? Because I'm, I'm, I'm a broker. I don't really sell real estate anymore. And I would say that you are probably... But uh, I guess to agents. Oh, to there agents. You go. Yeah, because some well, agents might I be watching. I would say, um, you know, if you're an agent and you want to learn about luxury and really learn how to build a real strong business um, in the luxury market... I think we're, your, we're, we're a great <laughs> place to start. So I would love to talk with you about that and see if that's something that might work for you. Yes. So Gabriel and I are a huge testament to, uh, to PBC and everything they offer. So um, I don't know. I can't, say, I, can't, I can't say enough about Diana and all that she's done for Gabriel and I. We do uh, weekly meetings with her, and she's just been an absolute blessing. I know she's a blessing to, uh, to, to PBC. So if you want to get in touch with her, get in touch with us, like she said, and we'll be happy to kind of facilitate that for you. If you're a new agent thinking about joining uh, Phyllis Browning, or not even a new agent, you can be an experienced agent. But thank you guys so much for watching. We are super excited. Please check us out next month. We have a wonderful guest. I'm not going to let you guys know right now, but it's a really good guest. Please check us out on the next one. Thank you for watching this one. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Hit the bell notification button. And at the same time, we are San Antonio's Realtor Couple. You can reach us at 210-504-5301 if you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in San Antonio. We're here to help you uh, do all of that. But most importantly, to help you fall in love with San Antonio. So thank you so much for watching. We will see you on the next one. Ha, 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 ha.